Welcome to Maximo Joe's Cafe. Brought to you by Bonetti. This week in the cafe, we're going to have a good time. Hey everybody, welcome back to the cafe. This week we just got these brand new mugs in. Bonetti, Maximo Joe's Cafe. So this week in the cafe, okay, I'd like to thank everybody and welcome you to episode two. We love hearing from you. Thank you for all your feedback on our first show. This week in the cafe, we're going to talk about best business practices. And then we're going to go look at the Start Center as an application in Maximo. So when we talk about best business practices, what is it? How do you use it? So I just did a Google search on best business practices just to show you that this is a complex subject because best business practices are not a set of written rules like a in a book that says this is the way you do things. It's a mixture, a mixture of a lot of different things. You can have best business practices uh, in management. Some of them are just common sense example is you've always been told praise somebody in public discipline them in private it just makes sense and then we look at the different things about what is a best business practice so let's look at it this way some of the best business practices is how you engage workers how you reward effort stay committed to what your business is doing seek clarity you want to make sure that your best business practices add continuity to your business is are easy to understand and you understand why you're doing it in your culture you want to focus on team effort you don't want this to be best business practices coming down from the o level and nobody likes them so you want to have uh, team building exercises that take and develop these best business practices and hold regular meetings what are best business practices okay it's any activity or tactic that a business uses to reach its objective in our case it's making money most businesses are in business to produce a product that they can sell and the best business practices are attempts to do it in the most effective and cost-effective way okay in business we, we look at best business practices as a set of guidelines ethics ideas uh, that represent the most effective way or efficient way or prudent way to do things. There may be external sources that push a set of best business practices from authorities such as regulators or governing bodies that say you have to do things in a certain way. And so those are tend to be forced upon you due to the type of business you're in and you have to comply with those. A lot of what you have the most control over is your internal best business practice. And those are normally driven by your management team. Some of the importances of best business practices, the strategy is there to try to help your business to become more competitive, okay, make more money, increase sales, develop new markets, reduce cost, be more efficient, improve your skills of your workers, using technology more effectively, reduce waste, improve quality of your product, and respond more quickly to innovations in your sector. How do you implement best business practices? Well, number one, do your homework. Every company is different. Every business's philosophy is different. Then you have to share your information. And we're talking about internally, you may have partner businesses that you that you deal with you may have multiple locations so if you find a best business practice that works one place you may want to try to make that a universal best business practice you need to define your metrics this is the hard part so if you define your metrics say this is what we want to improve you have to ha it can't be a uh, an improvement of feelings it's got to be something that's measurable so you look at it and say, how are we going to measure if we're succeeding in this one area? So that takes some thought. And then you look for a way to improve it through best business practices. Number four is probably the hardest thing is manage change. Human beings hate change. 
usually it takes a couple months for the brain to catch up to what you're doing. There's some strategies there that help you manage that change more effectively, having team involvements, decision making, so everybody feels like they're part of the solution, not that it's just being passed down to them. And then you wanna look at modifying and customizing for your business. Involve everybody, make it a team effort, all the way from the technicians, through management, salespeople if they have to be involved. Always align your best business practices and balance them with your business and customer needs. And then we always wanna do evaluate and refine. You always wanna innovate, you always wanna look for better ways to do things. You may reach what is good is good enough in a certain aspect of best business practices, but always be aware that things can improve and it may be in your best interest to evaluate it and say, is this the best way? Is there new things out there? Has technology advanced to the point where you want to take and revisit and update your best business practices? And I guess the final word here, and to sum this up, is usually best business practices can be very complex. You want to keep them as simple as you can. You want to take and use what's good for you. Just because somebody else jumps off a cliff doesn't mean you jump off a cliff. So you want to keep that in mind and work as a team to improve your business by developing best business practices. We're going to talk about start centers. So basically, what is the start center? It is the place where most users by default, once they sign in, is presented to them on their screen. Your start center page is the ability to have quick access to tools to perform your duties, KPIs to let you know what's going on. The users can have the ability to customize their start centers. We're gonna be talking about the details of this some important things are, as an administrator, you have the ability to set up Start Center templates for your users. Now, these can be customized for their specific roles that they play. A good advice is if you have certain company KPIs uh, that you want to distribute uh, specifically for those roles, you can take and add those to your templates. One important thing is those templates are associated with security groups. If you add a user to a specific security group, let's say you have a security group for technicians, then they would automatically get the technician start center with the KPIs that are relevant to that role. Some users may have multiple start centers based off of the different functions that they have available to them because of their security groups. So you may have somebody who's a technician but also works as a part-time inventory person depending on the size of your company. So they may have one or two or three different start centers. One important thing is the start centers do not restrict in any way your security rights to use and access different information. It's more of a way to organize your start centers by the role that you're going into Maximo for. So if I'm going in and I know I'm doing technician work and I have multiple start centers, I'm gonna click on my technician one and it's gonna give me the KPIs so I can view the information from that angle. And then if I click on my inventory one, then I would see KPIs that are important for that role. So it just helps you organize. So you not don't have everything in one place. A user with administrative rights can create and change templates. Your regular users basically will have the security rights you give them. So you can allow them to adjust their start centers as they want to, put in customized result lists. I recommend that you train your users how to do this and allow them the flexibility to use their start center for their maximum potential. You can always take and 
push them back to their templates and restrict it if you find that someone's having troubles or issues with their start center okay a good thing about start center is also they're defaulted in english however you can take and customize your start center templates for any language that is required so we're going to go ahead and go into maximo so this is an example of a start center this user has two his administrative and inventory okay a start center is made up of portlets each portlet has certain functionality associated with it and we can talk about that by just going in here and changing my content and layout and in here I can see what's in my left column what's in my right column I can take and select content by adding portlets that's available to me through security so if I add a quick insert quick insert portlet is basically it'll automatically bring you to that application with a record brand new record ready, ready to fill in your bulletin board there's not a lot of customization you can do with this it would be more of an administrative changes that have to be done with it favorite applications a way that you can set up where you spend most of your time what what are the applications you want to use most often you set those up in there inbox and assignments if you're using workflow that is what this is anything that's in workflow that has been assigned to you or a person group you're in will show up on the list the rest of them down here are used for gathering information showing result sets all of these are based off of queries so you basically build a query somewhere create a kpi and then you associate those kpis to your graph or your list okay a result set is is basically a list screen of records so let's say you want to look at all work orders that are open you can create a result set that shows those on your start center when adding a portlet or moving portlets around you can set the order that they show up in you can set the layout whether it's narrow wide equal spaced or wide narrow there are a couple things you want to keep in consideration a result list with multiple fields should be in the wide section kpi graph in the narrow section but it's all aesthetic so you can make it look the way you want to some of the other things you may have up here is you may have the update your start center what that will do is if I've made customizations to here and I, I want to clear it I can go ahead and update it and it'll bring back the original template administrators can modify existing templates they can add templates creating brand new ones you have the ability to do your display settings so if you have multiple start centers you can set which one is your default and their default will always show first and you can even hide them from here so if you have a user that has a lot of templates because of the security like an administrator the administrator may have 10 15 start centers here but he'll never use them i just wanted to show you something at bonetti we have created a number of utilities that we use to help manage start centers one of them is bonetti user start centers if i go to that then i can take and force a user to revert back to his template as far as start center so if I had a user that made a mistake and is frozen out of his start center I can take and delete that record here and when they sign in it'll reload the template so that's one thing I wanted to show you at Benetti we've, we've developed a number of utilities for the administrators queries so if somebody writes a bad query i can go in there and delete it now we come to the end of this episode of maximo joe's cafe i want to thank you for stopping by please like comment and visit our webpage at bonetti.com and feel free to uh, ask any questions if you need more uh, information in more detail about how you can use your maximo better please do not hesitate to contact Bonetti. Thank you very much, and have a great day.